All right, some notes from my super hacked Technics SL1200 MK2. First off, we got some cool upgrades. Got the plexiglass AC jack all installed there very nicely. Works great. Uh, would be nice to have maybe a DC in jack. Although what I kind of want to do is install a battery right here. Lithium ion battery cell, charger, everything. Step up converter. It only takes 12 watts, the whole thing. So that's pretty doable. Uh, of course, we got the two plexi pieces with the large plexi piece on top. Now there's some wiggle room here to the knob I don't really like. So ideally there'll be some tape or something between the two plexis attaching them to each other. So then um, that will stop it from having that lateral play. Uh, as far as the motherboard's concerned, holy crap that I do a lot of work on this today. Mostly just trying to understand stuff, but it was still a bit stressful because these boards are now 300 bucks, which is insane. But uh, a couple things I found out. So one, there's an NPN. This is supposed to be a 2SC245 uh, transistor. I've replaced it with something else that I found at the hackerspace. Um, the one that's in here now, though, is 100 milliamps current rating, and the original is a 300 milliamps current rating. Somehow doubt that's causing the issue, but, you know, you never know. Uh, there is a capacitor on the underside of here connecting pin 8 to pin 10. That's just a decoupling cap for the 10 volt input rail, uh, which is pin 10. Pin 8 is ground. And uh, uh, TP22 is right over here. And uh, there's a couple of test points, which I can use my scope and check to see. Well, I guess I know it's entering 45 RPM mode and 33. It's just not latching it for some reason. And if it's just not latching it, and that's the only problem, this resistor seems to hack it just well enough. Maybe I don't need to change this chip, and I really should just stick with a microcontroller solution where I can do uh, a single press on the 45, and, and that'll just do a latch state. Um, sure would be easier. I'm really strongly considering it now. Uh... R212 is a resistor only for the LEDs in the on lamp there. I've disconnected it for now, and I've also disconnected the leg of the resistor for the LED over here, because I'm just tired of the blue lights in my face when I'm trying to relax. So those are just disconnected right now, but all I gotta do is solder that back in, and then I'll have the power lamp. I can also change that resistance, of course, to decrease the brightness. Now, the... Uh, plug here for the LED. I've removed the LED completely. It needs some work. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, the plug here is isolated completely. It is a 21 volt and ground deal. Uh, and then the there's a 1.5k half watt resistor, I believe, uh, that's in line over here, down here usually, uh, stock, which goes to the lamp. So that kind of knocks it down a bit. But it's a pretty high voltage lamp. And so, yeah, it's a high voltage rail. What I want to do is put a buck converter to give it like a 5 volts or a 3.4 volts or whatever and I should just use the plug going from here to the buck converter and then make my own plug going to the LED array. I think it's going to make a lot more sense. Obviously fuse everything and I should be in good shape with that. Now why is the LED thing giving me some hassle? Well the wires have to be really really thin. Uh, when you depress it and then you release it and it comes back up it's really finicky because of the very tight space they give you there. Uh, also, I need to make a little board for the LEDs, the three 201s or whatever they are. Um, and I found the white plastic, though, which was pretty nice. And I do have the screw and the, the silver mount all in a bag now. And there's a little... Uh, anyway, I need to use some probably some really thin wire. I might just actually, once I make that DC or DC board, I'll make a... I'll just use, you know, 30 ohm... Or, sorry, 30 gauge wire. I was really wanting to use my new 22 gauge uh, connected, like, power wire that I have but I think it might just be too thick. Um, it's just such a tight fit there. So yeah, I would like to get a stock lamp, but they're really hard to source now. And so I might just have to stick with those LEDs. They're warm LEDs though, so they should look pretty nice actually, pretty similar to stock. Um, what else? Uh, I would like to drill out the remaining bits of these washers that are rusting just a tiny bit. It's not a big deal, but it would be nice to get to it eventually. I do need to, to secure with screws this case because it does have a little bit of a lip play, which will affect the way it's actually tracking on records. So that's not good. Um, and uh, of course, I don't normally secure the tone arm. I might finally do that. We'll see. 
Uh, the toad arm, by the way, if it's a 15 millimeter cartridge, it should be at zero height, which it is. Also, I did not calibrate the, uh, the uh, psh, 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 there's instructions in the manual for calibrating the anti-skate if you remove the mechanism, which I did. I didn't really calculate the anti-skate. I don't think I did. I don't remember uh, doing it. But you're supposed to put it at 0 0.5 and then align the uh, the spring to the, the little pin that it pushes against. Uh, and anyway, that's how you're supposed to do it. I'll, I'll double check the manual on that. Uh, there are some oscilloscope readings and stuff I can take to double check this chip. It's such a weird failure, but this chip is now like $80. It's insane, dude. Oh my God. I'm so glad I bought that spare when I did, but I might just stick, stick to the hack and leave this one the way it is. Cause holy crap, this stuff's getting expensive. Um, I do really like that power supply. I'm so glad that's worked for the past psh, 10 years now. Gosh, no, almost, uh, over 11 years. This thing's been going strong. Love you, Technics. You're the bomb. And uh, now I've got my dust cover, which I'm going to put in, which I'm super excited about. Hopefully everything works. I didn't mess anything up. But I just wanted to make this video to make note of everything. By the way, none of this is currently connected to anything. Um, don't worry about the 5 volts here. That 5 volt uh, with the diode is actually uh, just a reference for the, uh, the 21 volt circuit. So, um, yeah, none of this is being used, basically. I should go in and replace these capacitors. Oh, my God, are they sad. Sad, sad capacitors. Um, I should measure the max height, but then aside from that, I don't think I have anything to worry about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I can't believe with these old-ass capacitors and all the janky stuff I've done to this, it's, it's still working great. It has for so many years. It's such a trooper. Um, I should also investigate what's under here and see... We can do a better heatsink solution, although what I got there has been working for a long, long time. Uh, and yeah, I mean, eventually I would really like to get that battery in here. Um, this is a this ground pin is connected to ground. That's just the test point. There's nothing to worry about there. Um, I should measure the voltage output on this transistor, which doesn't have enough current. I should order the right one, of course, with the, the right amount of current. But um, the middle pin is supposed to be read like 2.8, 2.9 volts, something like that. And uh, the capacitors and resistors, all this stuff down here and, and the circuitry over here, these two capacitors, that's kind of what makes up the, uh, the, the oscillation timing, the rotational timing. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm, I keep trying to like troubleshoot all this, but I, I really think it's just the latch circuit and this is bad and I need to just accept reality and build a microcontroller circuit, which would honestly be easier than all this other stuff. So uh, yeah, let me think out loud. Uh, To-do list is going to be... Order, order a capacitor kit, like just recap, uh, do a do a step down, do a butt converter step down, maybe mount it right here, a little piece of foam, whatever, with my own plug going to the LED. And that way everything's kind of isolated and I can do whatever I want with the LED. I can use thinner wire, whatever I want. I don't have to use this custom plug except to go to the, the drop down, which would be nice. And that way I can keep that stock still. And uh, gosh, if I'm doing an Arduino to fix it, God, I might as well do one that can turn off the LEDs. Now, this LED is driven by a voltage that actually is required for the fader. So I'll have to run a separate wire over here to the microcontroller, which should not be a big deal at all. Now, as far as communicating with the microcontroller, I guess I could install some NRF solution. That would be a bit much. Or, or, interesting, I'm wondering... I could use, uh, no, I don't think there's a better way to do it. Um, you'll have to come up to think of some stuff. I mean, obviously I've got a lot of LEDs here to work with and do different solutions with, but, um, and I also want to do, I do want to do a, uh, Hall effect sensor to, to shut off, shut everything off when the, uh, when the tone arm reaches the middle of the label, reaches the label essentially, or reaches towards the middle. Now that would have to be changed though. It'd have to be calibrated per record. Probably, maybe, depending on the groove. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe. It's a thing to think about. All right, that's it.